Well, hello, my friends. It's Jennifer. Welcome back to the podcast. This is podcast episode 195. And today we're going to be talking about some things that you can do if you are someone who is scared of success. Now, listen, before you're like, girl, that's not me. And you go ahead and turn off the podcast and go about your holiday baking or what have you. It's interesting to me that a lot of times people will think I'm not scared of success until I kind of start talking about some of the ways you can tell if especially a woman is playing small because she is afraid of success. And then people will be like, oh, I I didn't, I didn't realize Jen that that's like, that's why I was doing that. Like, I think sometimes we have behaviors that we're, you know, we're like, I don't know why I do that, but I sure do that. And then sometimes when somebody points out to you why you perhaps or what the underlying fear is contributing to that behavior, it's such an eye opener that it has the ability to actually change everything. Like self-awareness and not in like a new agey, you know, know who you are. I mean, because it's important. Yes, we know who we are. I'm not talking about that, but I'm just talking about understanding why you behave in the way that you do and what emotions and what feelings do you have that are contributing to that behavior is just, it's, it has the ability to just change so many things like spiritually, um, physically in your life, in your business, all the things. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Like what to do if you're somebody who's playing small. And I'm going to start out talking about how you know if you're somebody's playing small. So stick around, but real quick first, I'm going to just give a quick shout out to someone who owns Husky Piano. She went and left a review on the podcast and reviews matter, just so you know. Uh, there's some really big names we're trying to get on to the podcast for next year. And I can tell you as someone who, you know, has pitched a bunch to be on podcasts, I always look at how many reviews do people have on their podcast? Cause that's an indicator of how many listeners and downloads that they have. And so, you know, when you see somebody that's got a substantial amount of reviews, it's usually a sign they have a good listenership. And that's a, that's a podcast I'd want to be on. Well, the same works for us. Like, right? so I want tons and tons of reviews on our podcast so that when I'm making ass to people who have a big platform that they're more willing to say yes. So if you have a few minutes, um, you know, today when we're done here to go leave a review on the podcast, please do. So Husky Piano said she loves my podcast. It's so relevant, very on point, so helpful. I share personal stories and translate my stories into useful information for starting and building a business. I'm always humorous and encouraging. And I just want to say thank you, Husky Piano. So Um, I appreciate that. It always feels weird to like hear words about myself. And that's not the point. The point is I just appreciate your review. So thank you. I just pray a blessing over you and your piano business. I pray that everything that you set your hand to that God would anoint and that he would double and triple even your expectations for your business this year. And I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. So here's how I even got this idea for this podcast topic. Okay. I was doing so I do very few one-on-one coaching appointments at all, ever. And um, for most of 2020, I haven't done any, like zero. And then in the last couple of months, I've taken like two a month. Um, I'm very particular about, um, you know, who I coach on a one-on-one basis, about my time, about how I can best serve people, et cetera. So I was um, in the middle of a one-on-one call, um, last month I did two of them and was talking with a woman who, um, we were able to really, I was able to really hone in on the fact that she's scared of success very early in the podcast. And I'll just say in her defense, there have, you know, been recently some big influencers, some big names, some people in ministry, um, whose, uh, marriages are ending. And, um, the woman that I was coaching was like, one of the reasons I'm scared of success is because I'm afraid I'm going to lose my marriage if this becomes really successful. And so we really dove into that for her um, because it was super important that we got to like the root of that. And we also, she could understand what God says about her and that we could, I could give her some like concrete ways of how to deal with that fear and to see where that fear comes from and why that fear is there and how it's keeping her small, all the things. And so I thought that that was just, you know, a fascinating conversation. It made me just think about how many women I know who are scared of success. One of the fears, yes, could be, um, there's a real fear in a lot of women that if I'm successful over here, will that cost me everything on the other side? If my business is super successful, can my spouse handle it? And by the way, I'm going to be, I'm talking to my friend Jamal Miller about, um, 
we're going to try to come up with some sort of a podcast um, that has to do with the topic of women in marriages where the women are very front facing and they are the business owners and they're, you know, being very successful. And what does that look like in terms of being Christians and how should that look and what does that need to play out looking like so we can really protect the marriage? Okay. So, uh, Jamal Miller and his wife and I have um, been chatting about how we can, how we can serve you guys in that way. So stay tuned for that. But, um, so perhaps the fear is, you know, uh, winning here, but losing there, maybe, you know, the fear, um, uh, it could be a million things. It could be, what are people going to think of me? It could be, um, uh, am I going to be able to sustain it? There is a real fear. You know, there's, there's, it, there's like this huge pendulum friends. And on one side of the pendulum, and trust me, I see this every day because I coach so many women on one side of is fear of failure, fear of failure, fear of failure. And I always thought before I was a coach that probably the majority of the women worried about failure. There is an equal proportionate amount of women who are just as equally concerned about winning, who are just as equally concerned about success. And so a lot of times that is attached to um, the fact that a lot of us women were people pleasers at heart. We don't like confrontation. And sometimes success comes with a cost. And so sometimes people are playing small because they don't want to pay the price of what, you know, is going to be required of them to go to that next level. And so, you know, it might be um, that women are self-sabotaging to keep their business small. It might be that um, once you start growing, you like stop, or you just put on the brakes. You can feel yourself once you gain some momentum doing things that are like, whoa, 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 and putting kind of a halt to it. Maybe you're, um, you're, you're, scared of success. And I can, I could pinpoint that you are because you haven't even allowed yourself the honor of starting like a business yet, or starting the dream that's been in your heart or the, the thing God's put inside of you. And you're like, what? Huh? Well, listen, you know, there are some people that won't even give themselves just the gift of the start because they're so scared of it running away from them and getting out of control. I can often tell too that a woman's scared of success if she's completely an overthinker. Overthinking, self-sabotage, procrastination, those are all really good signs. So, okay, let's say that now you're like, okay, Jen, I've, I've listened this far. I didn't realize that I was playing small and scared of success, but m- maybe, maybe I am. Now, what do I do? And so there was a couple of things that I wanted to encourage you with today on this podcast of things you can do if you know that you've been playing small. Like, how are you going to stop? If you're someone that has seriously been nervous about success, and my printer literally is going off right next to me. If you're watching me on YouTube right now, you're like, she has printer coming out of that machine. I sure do. I sure do. And part of me is like, okay, am I going to have Zeke edit this? Are we just going to go with it? And we might just go with it. Because every time I just go with it, I hope I encourage some other woman to just go with it. And there goes the printer again. All right. To the glory of God. Okay. I'm going to keep talking because I can talk loud. So if you suspect that you are somebody who is honestly scared of success, here's three things that I want you to do. Okay. First is I want you just to recognize and acknowledge it because see the Bible talks about how, when we shine a light on something like that disperses the power of it. When you shine a light on that thing that you're most fearful of, like then it kind of loses its hold on you. If you guys remember in Fear is Not the Boss of You, my book, I talk about how um, I had, and I was very vulnerable in the book. I don't think I've ever actually talked about this on the podcast. There were several years in our marriage when the kids were little and I was frumpy and grumpy, friends. I was frumpy and grumpy. Had a lot of babies really fast. I was telling Ava the other day, I had three babies under five. I was pregnant, you know, five times in five years because we had two miscarriages. And, um, and so I was frumpy and grumpy. <laughs> so I can remember during that time being like so nervous about my husband having an affair. I was, cause I knew I wasn't at my best. I knew I was home all day, was spit up all over my clothes, barely getting my teeth brushed before he'd walk in the door at night, you know? And so there was like this fear inside of me of what if my husband is cheating? And, um, and God walked me through this whole thing. And I'm not, if you haven't read the book, go buy fears, not the boss of you right now on Amazon. Like literally today it's $10 and 38 cents. I mean, come on. 
that chapter alone is going to get somebody a breakthrough for $10 and 38 cents. So go run to Amazon. But I talk about how God walked me through this exercise of, okay, if that's the worst thing that happens, Jen, then what would happen? And really like I had to walk through this whole thing emotionally, like, okay. And if that happened, then, then would I still make it? And the truth is that that one exercise that the Holy spirit was kind enough to walk me through, it just shined such a light on the thing that I was scared of most that it really lost its grip on me. And some of you are worried about things in your business that you haven't even verbalized out loud. You haven't even allowed yourself to like recognize that that's what it is. And if you would just do it, if you would just be like, okay, and, and, and maybe you share that with somebody, maybe you share that with me on my Instagram DMS. I, I know I'm a stranger, but I also love my DMS of the thing that you're most scared of. If you want to, I didn't plan on this, but if you want to message me on my Instagram DMS today, what's the thing you're most scared of in business? Like, even if I don't see it or I don't respond, because sometimes I get, you know, hundred DMS a day. Sometimes I get 400. So it just depends on the day. I try to get back to all of them, but sometimes just getting it out and being like, okay, I wrote it out. I told somebody the thing that I was most scared of. Sometimes just recognizing it is the first step to recovery. I mean, this is why AA meetings are so successful, right? Because as soon as you can kind of acknowledge the thing, then it loses so much of its power over you. It's no longer this hidden secret thing that, oh gosh, I hope nobody figures it out. I've been telling my husband, I really want this business to be a success. But the truth is I'm scared crapless that it's going to get out of control and I'm going to lose him. Like just giving words to that you almost realize then how ridiculous it sounds in a lot of ways. And it takes the power out of it. So recognizing that you might be scared of success is step number one. Number two, if you are someone who's a woman of faith, I got, I'm going to ask you just to repent. And, and you're going to be like, what? Well, listen, if God has deposited in you this gift, this thing he wants you to serve your world with, this ability to do something that he didn't give the girl next to you or the girl next to you, like he gave it to you, right? But you haven't been using those giftings because of fear. I think that that's something that is worthy of an apology. I do. And, and maybe, and you might think I'm getting all religious and I'm not, but it literally simply like, you know what, Lord, I'm so sorry. I have been playing so small out of fear and I'm sorry, help me to do better. It doesn't have to be some, you know, crazy experience. It doesn't have to, uh, you know, I was even thinking back to the days when I was raised Catholic and, um, I love you Catholic people, by the way, but you know, you don't, you're, you're not have to get 10 acts of contrition and all those things, like literally just a conversation between you and God, like, God, I'm so sorry that you you know, I haven't trusted you enough to help me steward my gift. Um, I've with, I've withheld from bringing my gifts to the world out of fear. Like, I'm sorry. I didn't believe you Lord. When you said, I'm going to give you this business and here's what's going to happen. Like, you know, repenting for that. and just being like, you know what? I'm sorry. I recognize that I have a fear. Oh Lord, I'm sorry. I need help. I think that is so powerful. That is so powerful. And it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, this huge theatrical production. God gives each of us gifts that I believe he absolutely expects for us to use on this side of heaven for his glory. And every time, friends, lady friends, female friends, I'm getting really close to the podcast mic. And Zeke is going to say, John, back up. And I'm going to say, but I was trying to have a moment. Every time, girlfriend, that you start playing small, and you start getting momentum and you stop, or you start trying to decide on putting some out in the world and you quit, or you, you self-sabotage, or you dumb things down, or you don't even allow yourself to start, or you overthink. Every time you're doing that, I believe with everything in me that it affects people around us. I also talked in Fear is Not the Boss of You. If you read the book, you know about how moms, when you're playing small, you're not at your best. You are not at your best. And as moms Maybe you don't have kiddos, but you're a wife. And if you're single, hey, this affects you too. When you are not at your best, friend, when you're not, the people around you pay for that. I can absolutely tell you without a shadow of a doubt that if you are a wife or if you are a mother, you set the tone for your home. You set the tone for your home. God anointed you in that area. When mom, you know that saying, when mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Where do you think that came from? The Bible. <laughs> I mean, God didn't say that, <laughs> but it is, it, it, you can, you can kind of weave it back to scripture somehow. 
when we are not living the way we're supposed to be and doing the things that we're supposed to be doing, it, it creates in us this tension, this rub, this like a little bit of anxiety, this little bit of pissy pants, because we're like, I know I'm supposed to be doing different than what I'm doing. And dang it, I hate it that I just keep playing so small. I hate it that I keep self-sabotaging. I hate it that I keep blah, blah, blah. Well, I know that for me, when I'm feeling like that, when I'm feeling frustrated with myself, I take it out on Jason. I take it out on my kids, maybe not consciously, but I'm short. My words are not as loving. I'm distracted. I'm a little bit angry. I'm preoccupied. You can't tell me that when, when things aren't clicking the way that you want them to in your business, that you don't bring that home, even if you do business at home. I don't know how you separate those two worlds. And so, and if you're not married and if you don't have kids, I, you have friends, you have parents, you have siblings. There are people that are not getting the best of you when you are not like walking in the authority and the anointing that God gave you. It's just the way that it is. So recognize it, repent for it. And then the third thing, you got to turn from it and try something different. So how do you do that? Okay. So let's say you've been playing small. Let's say you've been, every time you start thinking about business, you kind of get nervous. And so you just, you blame it on 2020. You blame it on the kids needing to be home from school. You blame it on the fact that um, fourth quarter seems like a hard time to start. You blame it on, I need to do Christmas shopping. You blame, like, let's say you've been doing that. Okay. Let's say you've been, you've been putting things off. You've been playing small. You've been self-sabotaging all of the things. Okay. So now how do you fix it? You need to turn from it. You need to be open to trying something totally different. You need to be open to thinking about things totally different because turning from it means, okay, I was headed down this direction and you know what, this path is headed towards destruction or at least passivity. And if I'm going to turn from that, that means I got to take a whole another different path, right? Well, if I'm taking a whole different path, what is that going to look like? It's going to look like new things, new ways of thinking, new people, new mindsets, new things that you're allowing into your mind and brain that the people you're following on social media, the podcast you're listening to, the television shows you're watching. If you're going to turn from playing small and try to start playing in a way that you feel like is in alignment with God's call in your life or the direction you're hoping your business actually goes. If you're going to turn from playing small to that, you're going to have to be willing to be uncomfortable. You're going to have to be willing to do things that are different than you've ever done before, because what got you there is not, or got you here is not going to get you there. You're trying to get to, to go up to the next level. The things that you previously did are no longer going to work at this new level. They're just not, they're not. You're going to have to willing to have counsel. Um, sometimes that can look like a good therapist. Sometimes that can look like a good group of people um, that you, you know, get into a business group with. Sometimes that looks like um, a different friend group. But normally we flock together, right? So if you're someone who's been self-sabotaging, um, and I say this with all the love in my heart, but if you've been complaining about how awful 2020 is for your business, there's no way now you can get this off the ground. My guess is you've surrounded yourself with like-minded thinkers and you're all probably saying the same things. You're all probably saying the same things about how nothing's possible and we're all going to heck in a handbasket and this is a horrible time for business and what's going to happen, you know, with the next administration and what's going to happen with the virus and what's going to happen with all things like you're going to have to get away from all that. Legit in 2021, there is no time for you to be surrounding yourself with people who are continuing to play small. You just can't, you just can't. If you actually want to play bigger, it's going to require that you do things differently. That doesn't mean necessarily ending friendships, but it means that you can't, like if you're surrounded by other people who are playing super small, how do you think you're ever going to be able to climb your way out of that without doing some things different? Because when you stay there and you stay with those people that are in that same mindset, it affects you. I promise you, you might get like a few rungs up the ladder out of there, but they're just going to yank you back down to that level. And if you're wanting to go to the new level, 
it's going to require that you find different role models, that you are surrounding yourself with people who are playing bigger, who are not sacrificing their beliefs or their families at the altar of business. It's going to require that you are, um, if you're a woman of faith, that you inquire of the Lord of what this is supposed to look like for 2021. The truth is, if you've been playing small and you're listening to this podcast right now and you're like, you know what? I am done. I am D-U-N done with playing small. I'm going to completely like, I'm in it to win it this year. In 2021, like I'm about to do it. Um, I want you to know that sometimes when we get that, you know, snap, snap, snap attitude while I'm here for it, I love it. I just want you to know that it's quite possible, you know the dishwasher is going to break tomorrow, or you're going to get a check in the mail tomorrow. That's going to not allow you to do something or, um, and I'm not trying to speak negativity over you. I'm just saying that I've been around long enough. I've walked with the Lord long enough. I've coached women long enough to know that when they try to go to a new level, a lot of times in business that the enemy will come in sly as a Fox right off the bat. He'll be like, Oh no, she didn't. Oh no, she didn't. And I'm going to, and, and put up something in your path immediately to prevent that. Because listen, the enemy loves it when you're playing small. When you're playing small, you have so little like um, influence. It's not just expanding your checkbook, friends, with your business. I mean, that's fabulous. I, I love when I can coach women and they're making more money. I love that. But it's also about impact and influence and, um, and alignment with what you're supposed to be doing. Like that is powerful stuff, but it will not happen for you if you're still playing small. And so just know, I mean, if you read the Bible, you know that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That means steal your dreams, kill all your joy, destroy your future. I mean, he comes to do that in business too. So if you've been playing small, listen, you can stop. You can absolutely stop. I promise you, you can. But I really hope that you will recognize it, put some words to it, dig deep on why that's happening. Two, that you'll repent from it and turn from it. And three, you'll like run in the other direction and try some new things and do some different things that are the opposite of playing small. That is my hope for you today, honestly. Um, yeah, we also just as a side note here, we have a challenge going on that is um, in alignment with this talk actually. And it's called the next level challenge. It's for any woman who's trying to go to the next level in business in 2020. But in particular, those of you who are trying to make your first six figures in business next year. Now, for those of you who are like, I'm barely making anything six figures. Like there's no way I can do that. Listen, I made my first six figures back in the year 2000. My first year in business and I'm being really vulnerable. I made $90,000 my first year in a painting business. And every year after that, I've made over six figures. I went from zero to 90,000 in one year. If you don't think it's possible, friends, A, you don't know the God that we serve. B, you don't understand how the internet works. And three, you're thinking small. It is so possible for you to go to the next level. And uh, so we've got a challenge going on. You can go to jenniferallwood.com slash next level. It's a $10 challenge. Well, why isn't it free? Well, it's not free because every time, not every time, a lot of times when we do things for free, when there's no buy-in, people just don't care. And um, it's not that I care if you don't care, but I can't help you if you're like not showing up and doing the work. Does that make sense? But where people pay, they pay attention. So we put a $10 price tag on it hoping that that $10 buy-in is just enough to make you show up for the five days of this challenge. It's just five days. It's just five days. And if you're a person of faith for the love of everything holy, please do the upgrade to the prayer portion because the prayer portion last time we did a challenge was stinking amazing. That is where I could tell I was really walking in my own personal anointing when we did the prayer time. So go to jenniferowood.com slash next level. If you've been scared of success and playing small friend, I want to help you. Let me walk you through some things in this challenge and let's set ourselves up and just position ourselves totally different for 2021. Okie dokie. All right. If this was something that you loved, um, or you had a friend that came to mind while you heard me talking, will you forward this podcast to them? If you're, I know in my podcast app, there's like a little button down at the bottom where I can send this through a text message. I can send podcasts through an email. I can send podcasts through, um, even a messenger link on Facebook. So wherever you're listening right now, if you had one person come to mind, just forward this to them, if you would.
And um, I hope it's a blessing to them. All right, my friends, bless you. We will see you again next week or in the challenge. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.